Hello, welcome to Whistle Stop Matsu. I'm Patty Sullivan, Public Affairs Director. I'm here with Mayor Carl Castle of the Fairbanks North Star Borough, as well as our Assembly Member Jim Sykes of District 1. And what is our topic? We're going to talk about air quality tonight. Specifically for the Butte area or? Well, it could affect the entire borough and that's why it's such a topic because one of the two air quality monitors we have is in the Butte and sometimes when they have cold still air, it uh, creates violations which we've had a lot of and so far we've kept from being regulated by the EPA but we're right on the knife's edge and, uh, and um, we invited uh, Mayor Castle to come down because they've been doing this for like 30 years and I think their advice is not to get involved with the EPA, is that right? <laughs> as best as you can avoid it, that's a good thing. And if I may, your presentation on all the different outreach and tactics and strategy of getting folks to understand the difference between being a tough independent Alaskan versus, you know, uh, knowing how to burn wood right. Um, it's very impressive. Where did you come up with all of that? <laughs> well, we've been engaged with the issue for a number of years. Uh, I've always burned wood myself as one of my primary heat sources. and um, I've learned a lot since we have gone into a non-attainment status. And, uh, gotten more educated on the proper ways to burn wood and it can make a huge difference uh, absolutely huge hundredfold difference in the amount of emissions particularly PM 2.5 um, by doing it properly so it you need to do a good education campaign and, and let people understand and it's really to their advantage uh, it's one of the sad things for me is to see someone who's not burning properly is wasting money because they're not getting as much heat and energy out of their wood as they could if they did burn it properly. So doing it the right way is, is a self-interest actually as well as a community interest. You're improving the air quality for your neighborhood but you're also saving your own money. Well, I, I agree with that because I, the University of Fairbanks studied fire uh, a, a, a number of years ago and they came out with some of these recommendations and the top-down fire where you actually uh, get the off-gassing of the wood that hasn't burned yet to feed into the flames to burn more efficiently is a, is a uh, I thought I knew how to burn wood I mean I was a Boy Scout shoot and I and I, I, I burn wood today I have pretty clean burning stoves but it, it, it's an improvement in anything that helps your dollar and your effort uh, you know, as we age, it's not as much fun to go out and cut five or six cords of wood anymore. <clears throat> Mayor Castle, talk about some of the woes, really, that the uh, Fairbanks North Star Borough has been going through regarding air quality, wood burning, regulations. Well, change is difficult for folks, and we're really talking about a bit of a cultural change. Um, it, it is a, somewhat of a restriction, I guess, on, on freedom. Um, when we have an air quality alert and the air quality is particularly bad and we uh, ask or require people to not be burning, uh, I understand that that's a challenge and it's difficult. Um, so change doesn't come easy, but it's very important. I mean, the consequences of elevated PM 2.5 levels, there are significant health risks associated with it. It does cause problems. We've seen it in our community, the problems it's caused, elevated visits at the hospital, et cetera. Um, and it, it's something our children uh, need to, you know, they deserve to have clean air to breathe. It's kind of a basic part of life. And we have to figure out how to do better and we have to educate folks so that they understand it really can be done better. The frustrating part for me is that we took so long to get engaged in the process in Fairbanks that the situation got very bad and put us in a position of needing to have burn bans and just stop burning because the air gets that bad. I mean, four times the national standard, the threshold where the air quality becomes bad. We're at four times that elevation in some parts in our, our community. We wouldn't be there if we had taken steps sooner and gotten folks on board um, with new devices and education and helping their neighborhoods out and feeling part of the community. If we could have made that cultural shift sooner, it would have been much less intrusion on people's freedoms and, and rights than waiting like we did to get engaged. So how best do you get um, people educated? How do you make the shift? Uh, I, I mean, we have a in our particular area uh, where the Butte is, we have some people that uh, have economic hard times, they don't have choices, 
they, and so people are, they don't want their heat source taken away, which may be their only one. How do you, how do you uh, sort of make these changes happen without regulations? I mean, you've been forced to do it with the regulations, but do you think we can do it without being regulated? That's been my goal all along. Well, we are spending $600,000 annually on a marketing campaign to help educate folks. Um, we produce a number of brochures that help educate on how to burn wood properly. Um, when folks say, well, I don't have the money to do things, we're not talking about getting engaged financially. It's more how you light a fire, how you operate your device. Um, and those things save you money in the long run. So um, really there isn't an, an economic disadvantage to doing it right. Uh, so getting people informed of that um, is quite helpful. There's also grants available. So uh, EPA, while we all like to complain about them and their regulations, they also have been very helpful in, in our program in coming up with grant money for us to use for a stove change-out program. So folks that are financially disadvantaged and they have an old stove that doesn't burn cleanly and they can't operate it at a high standard, they can change the stove out and the borough uses this grant money to actually reimburse them for the change. And so that program's been very successful. We've changed out 1,500 or more devices already in the Fairbanks North Star Borough, which has made a, a significant difference. We've seen the, the difference um, specifically in Fairbanks. There's been a, a big difference. Not so much on the east side of town. Um, we've got a little bit of a different issue there, but um, still, it's helpful. Is the 600000 a uh, borough tax dollar money? On it the is. That's... Uh, well, actually, not all of it is. Uh, again, that's some grant money that, that okay. we got. Um, the state has been helpful with this, uh, as well as EPA, and we also have a significant amount of local money in, in it. What are some other costs? Uh, you mentioned the grant money to buy out the stoves. Um, how much has it cost your municipality? Well, it's been millions, uh, and that's frustrating in that if we had started sooner, it wouldn't cost as much. Uh, if we had been spending $600,000 a year on marketing 10 years ago, we probably wouldn't have to be spending any now. And so uh, we've made the problem worse by delaying getting engaged in it, and it's costing our community more money as a result, as a matter of fact, a lot more money. Um, because we didn't get engaged, now we've gone into what is classified as serious non-attainment instead of just moderate non-attainment. Um, uh, levels on the east side of town are that high, and with that comes new standards, and that has cost our community many millions of dollars in local dollars, particularly for our local power plants. And so I'm frustrated with that because we saved a few dollars early on, we saved a few hundred thousand dollars early on, and now it's costing us millions. And all of that comes out of our taxpayers' pockets, either in property taxes or in their electric bills um, for upgrades to our power plants that wouldn't be necessary if we had taken um, steps early on in, on this process. On marketing efforts, it's probably more than a brochure and a website and a video, I imagine. Is it also classes on how to you know, burn the proper fire? Is it things like that? Yes, we have videos, how to do videos uh, on our website. We have messages from all three mayors, myself and the mayor from Fairbanks, the city of Fairbanks, and uh, the city of North Pole. And we've done some together, and we're all on the same page. We work well together, the two city mayors and myself. Um, and we've pushed out a number of different uh, messages to the community and, and we burn wood, the North Pole Mayor and I both do. So we understand the, the dynamics and with how-to videos out there, mostly it, we're trying to just get people interested. Once they get engaged and they understand that it's a community issue, it's costing our community, it's not just costing them but the whole community, um, you know, people usually step up and do the right thing. They just need to understand that, and they need to be encouraged to be part of the community, and they usually come along. Um, the majority do, and that's really all you need is to get the majority on board to make an effort. If you make a good faith effort to burn dry wood, burn it properly in a quality device, then you'll be successful. Some people have asked um, um, about the PM 2.5, they say, well, why isn't it, why isn't the silt, which is measured by the PM 10s, uh, well, how do we know it's wood? Uh, and I know that you have more traffic in Fairbanks than we do in, in the Butte, but so what's, uh, 
how do you know that the wood is the main problem, or is it the main problem? Well, wood is the main problem. Um, and, and it's wet or green wood. That makes the problem worse. You know, burning any wood when you have incomplete combustion of the wood, then particulate matter goes up the stack and out into the air. Um, so the more complete you burn, the better it is for you because that's heat. So if you're burning those particles instead of sending them up the chimney, you get more heat out of the same stick of firewood. Um, that is a, a good thing. Having it dry, I mean, anybody who has burned really wet wood, or if you were camping and you know how long it takes to dry a piece of wood out, um, all of that drying process takes heat to convert and get that water to go out, out the chimney. All of that heat that is drying the piece of wood is wasted. That heat could be heating your house instead of drying the stick of wood out. And so again, using drier wood gives you more efficiency out of the wood that you've cut. And, and so. That whole process, um, just doing it properly, makes a very big difference. Um, we have found that actually the operation of a device and how it's operated is more important than the device itself. A very clean stove can put out a lot of PM 2.5 um, particles pollution if it's not operated properly. And a poor device can actually be comparatively clean if you're very conscientious about how you operate the device. And so the, the biggest key here is to get people engaged, just interested in the topic first so that they investigate and once they do they understand they're going to save money if they do it right. Who doesn't want to save money or cut less wood? I certainly am on board with both of that. And, and so people, uh, once they understand, they're, they're usually willing to participate. Well, I, the other question I had was, um, if you, I know uh, retrospectively, you, you've been involved with this process for a long time, but you know that we're just about two violations away by the end of this year uh, from possibly being forced into the first level of non-attainment, which means regulation. Um, and um, generally with the holidays and our coldest days in December and January, these, uh, these are the days that really get us because people are at home more, they tend to burn more, they tend to heat more. Uh, if you could uh, be in our spot 30 years ago, would you really work hard to try and convince people to try and get us through this winter without non-attainment? <laughs> I just wish I was here six months ago um, because I think uh, that might have been a more adequate time frame. Um, in two months, it's going to be very hard to push out a message and get much of a cultural change or an idea change in how people are operating. Most folks already have their wood supply in for the winter. Um, this isn't the time of year to be cutting this winter's wood. It won't dry in time. And so you, you really are kind of stuck for this winter other than um, getting the process started. Um, we kept delaying. Don't delay. If you do go into non-attainment, don't go into serious non-attainment, you know, which is what we did because we continued to try to avoid the issue um, for a number of years and it just has gotten worse and worse and worse and it has cost us more and more money every year. We've wasted a ton of money on this um, and so if you do go non-attainment, it, it doesn't change really the, the course of action at this point. Start today, start getting the message out to folks and, and try to make the change. Um, even do door-to-door -door campaign. We send folks out into the, uh, the dirtiest neighborhood, so to speak, with door hangers to put a note on their door and say, hey, we noticed your chimney is, is too short or we noticed that you know, the emissions from your chimney, if it's during a burn time, were not the best and you, know, you could do better and we can help with that. Here's ways we can help. Um, please get engaged and, and just trying to create awareness in, in the more egregious portions of the community, um, starting there. The, the personal is so much better in trying to actually change somebody's behavior and to make them aware and get them engaged. And that's what you need to do with this. Um, again, it's the operator's intention and, and how they operate a device more important than the actual devices. Although a very good device certainly can heat, hit, also hit higher standards than a, than a poor device. And getting people to switch on fuels. 
we've started to pay um, people for, for generators, part of our, our stove changeout program. Get rid of your stove, because people want it for backup if the power goes out. We will subsidize you buying a generator so your power doesn't go out. And that's better than your whole house stays warm and your electric stays on everywhere. You go through normal life processes instead of huddling around your wood stove in the living room. You know, so it's better um, for you and it's better for the air by far. And Is that paid for by a grant? Or that's part of our, our grant uh, money, yes. Okay. The borough, some residents, a few thousand at least, have been exposed to uh, some form of, of engagement. We've had some wonderful videos uh, and uh, you know uh, social media efforts, and uh, for the last probably two years, I think. But you're right; that next level is the harder one. You know, beyond the the, the message, the easy message of burn dry wood and and know how to burn and have the proper, you know, wood stocking, uh, you know, woodshed. Um, we're at the a trickier level. You know, the the harder level. And uh, I thought it was um, very uh, telling that you as the mayor called um, the worst offenders personally before they were given a citation. Uh, that, that was your idea. Well, it was my idea because the, the personal touch makes a big difference. And when the mayor's engaged, it makes a big difference. And um, I said, well, I don't want to find somebody. that When you find someone, that doesn't clean up the air. It just takes money out of their pocket and it makes it harder for them to succeed in cleaning up their wood burning process. And so that's to no one's advantage to actually write a uh, fine to someone. And so on our uh, situation, our citation process, the first thing we do, um, the first offense, we don't actually write a fine. We just give them a warning letter to say on such and such a date, this was the readings coming from the emissions out of your stack. This is in violation of our code. Um, if this happens again, then you will get fined and then a copy of that comes to my office and I give them a phone call and I say, hey, you know, we don't want to find you. What can we do? How can we work together? We need to clean up the air. We need to be partners on this. What can we do? And we have options. You know, there's stove changeout programs. Um, we've even had people in the, from the community donate dry wood to somebody who was next to our senior citizens home and was smoking them out across the street and they donated a quart of dry firewood to them to help him out and made a big difference, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of different things that we can do um, and I just engage folks and, and say, please help me not write you a citation because we're done. You got the warning letter. This is a phone call to say the next letter includes a fine and we, I don't want to do that and I don't want our staff to do that, so please help. And, and most folks understand when, when you work with them that way and say, we'll do what we can, but we're not going to ignore the situation. That's not an option. We're, we, the borough, are not going to go away and just let this continue. So let's work together to fix it. And most folks really, 99% have come on board and say, okay, I get it. Yeah. yeah. I, I got to say, I, I deeply appreciate what you've done here to come and tell us about your experience. I certainly hope you get out of the non-attainment process, and equally, I hope that we don't get into it. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, I'm a wood burner, and I really did learn something from the University of Alaska Fairbanks study on fires, and, and I think that's, that's really useful, because if we, can, if we can get through this year, it, uh, maybe that'll be a, enough time that we can get through another season, but I think it's really important that we get through this year and do not get involved with the, with the regulatory process, because uh, like uh, the city of Juneau has told me, and you've said, it's, uh, if you can avoid it, please do. And uh, that's still my goal. <laughs> well, I hope my being here has helped a little bit um, so. and maybe motivated some of the decision makers to move on this sooner. That's really the key, don't we? Um, the hole will only get deeper. You're digging. <laughs> Stop digging. Okay. Uh, you know that's that's the first thing, and, and you know address it immediately. And I think you I think you'd be all right. You might hit non-attainment, but if you would start addressing it right away, that won't get too serious, and it won't take as much to fix the problem. If you delay, it'll be much more challenging. Well, thank you. I, I deeply appreciate it. I really do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.